Ready to take your Disney World knowledge to the next level with new tips and secrets? Use today's video to improve your trip, learn about new hidden gems, and basically become a Magic Kingdom master. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Magic Kingdom is a massive park with tons for you to uncover. So today we're hitting you up with the latest and greatest 50 secrets of the park that'll not only help you turn into a Magic Kingdom pro, but also help you maximize your time in the park while you're at it. Now, before we get started, just want you to know we recently updated our free downloadable Magic Kingdom checklist. It is awesome looking, if I do say so myself. So if you want a handy dandy digital or printable Magic Kingdom companion that'll help you keep track of your day around the park, make sure to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash Magic Kingdom checklist. We're gonna get that mini guide sent your way ASAP. All right, number one on our list of Magic Kingdom secrets is uncovering Tron's new Easter eggs. Okay, now that Tron Light Cycle Run has opened in Tomorrowland and we've finally got a chance to launch into the grid, we're starting to really get an eye for some of the extra details the Imagineers have added around this new coaster. A few examples, well, you can see that identity disc on the wall after the pre-show. That disc represents the one Sam Flynn, AKA our protagonist, uses during the Tron Legacy film. If you're familiar with the Tron lore, then you might know a bit about Korra, or rather Kevin Flynn's apprentice. While the standard ride vehicles for this coaster are modeled after light cycles, the accessibility vehicles for those who can't ride comfortably on the light cycle setup are actually modeled after Korra's light rover that she drives during Tron Legacy. And although this might not be super secret per se, it's still cool to see in person. The floor inside the Tron building is polished so much so that it acts like a mirror to reflect all those blue lights to the nth degree because Disney really does think of everything. Number two on our list, find the secret door of Fantasyland. This secret is overlooked by thousands of Disney guests each day, and if you're not keeping a close eye out for it, you are bound to overlook it too. We love a tiny door here at DFV. To the left side of Bonjour Village Gifts in Fantasyland, and right before you reach the bathrooms, look down to find the teeniest, tiniest door in all of Magic Kingdom. According to a former Disney cast member, this door more than likely exists due to a miscalculation during the construction of New Fantasyland. Basically, the round manhole and the plumbing underneath would have been covered up just fine if the wall of the merchandise store had been constructed in a straight line. But it wasn't. Instead, this tiny door was created to blend into the wall and cover up this slight error. This isn't the only time Disney's had to make adjustments to their decor based on a slight miscalculation. You can learn about another little whoopsie daisy that happened over in Disneyland during our Disneyland Secrets video too. Now, what if you could get a free souvenir from your favorite princess? Where do we sign up, right? Enchanted Tales with Belle is a highly interactive storytelling experience in Fantasyland where guests get to experience the story of Beauty and the Beast while also becoming an active part of the retelling. It is super cool in there. That magic mirror is incredible. But after the show, there's a quick opportunity for guests to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Belle and a quick snapshot with her as well. And after that, you'll get that free special memento, a bookmark with Belle's picture and signature perfectly suiting for our bookworm princess. Now we've got another Tron one for you. We have a few Tron ones in here for you. With this one, you can create a futuristic figure that looks just like you. So when you board the light cycles at the Tron coaster, you could race against some pretty menacing programs. But if you wanna go a step further, you can create your own custom program action figure at the nearby Tomorrowland Launch Depot gift shop. The Tomorrowland Launch Depot is now the home of the Tron Identity Program. This program is similar to the activity you'll find at the Wind Traders gift shop over in Animal Kingdom, where you can create your own custom Navi doll. At the Tron version, you'll create a customized program action figure that looks and sounds like you. First, you're gonna enter the grid through a grid digitization portal, of course, located inside the store, and that uses image capture to scan your facial features. Then you'll customize the action figure by choosing a helmet and body configuration. You can decide whether you want to be an enforcer, a combatant, a scout, or a heavy sentry, and then you choose a team color. As part of the experience, you'll also create an identity chip that will interact with some other merchandise like identity discs and remote control light cycles. Once you finish this process, you'll head to command input to record six lines of dialogue. It takes about 20 minutes to make these selections, and then another 60 minutes for your figure to be ready. This activity requires advanced reservations, although walk-ins may be accepted depending on the day's availability and costs $89.99 per person. 
So Disney's animatronics can often be the best parts of an attraction because robots are super cool, but on several occasions, animatronics are reused or recycled into other attractions. So an animatronics design might be used for more than one character, as well as more than one ride. Take Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, for example. Several of the dwarfs in the final scene of the ride, specifically Doc, Happy, Sleepy, Grumpy, and Bashful, are animatronics that used to appear in Snow White's Scary Adventures before it was replaced by Princess Fairytale Hall as part of the new Fantasyland overhaul in 2012. The animatronics may have been updated since then, but they're still the same friends at heart, or rather at circuit board. Okay, maybe you're getting a little bit hungry now after all that stuff you've been doing, so it's time to customize your very own sweet and savory Magic Kingdom snack. In 2021, the Main Street Confectionery got a sleek and shiny new upgrade, and with this upgrade, the Colonel Kitchen was added to the back of the shop. You remember where Le Chapeau used to be? So you can create your own popcorn mix. Now, here's how it's done. You start by choosing a popcorn flavor, caramel, butter, cheddar, rainbow. Yes, rainbow is a flavor. Don't ask any questions. Sometimes there's even mint. And next, you're going to choose a syrup like dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate. Then you'll choose from a multitude of candies to top off your treats. M&Ms, pretzels, marshmallows, the works. The custom popcorn is priced at $12.99 for two toppings and a syrup, $13.99 for three toppings and a syrup, and a buck for any additional toppings. We're back at Tron to learn how to open a Tron locker without your magic band or ticket. Now, this is one of those things you may need to know if you don't like to have a magic band or a physical ticket with you and you just use your magic mobile on your phone. Opening the complimentary lockers at Tron is easy in theory. Just scan your magic band or key to the world card and you're in. But what happens when you are using magic mobile on your phone to get into the parks instead? Unfortunately, a virtual ticket on your phone cannot be used for lockers, but if you don't have a physical ticket or magic band handy, don't worry. Just ask one of the Tron cast members in the locker area for a temporary locker card. Use this card to open any locker before you get in line, then use it again to reopen the locker and retrieve your stuff after you return from the grid. Now guess what? You're gonna get to visit a new character in Magic Kingdom very soon, and it is very, very exciting. If you or someone in your travel group is the world's number one Encanto fan, then listen up, because this is good news. Disney announced that Mirabelle from the oh-so-famous family Madrigal will soon get her own meet and greet in Magic Kingdom. She's gonna be meeting guests in Fairy Tale Garden, which is currently where you're gonna find Merida. No hard feelings for our redheaded archer friend. Hopefully we'll still be able to meet Merida somewhere else, but who knows, Disney hasn't announced yet. Anyway, this new Encanto offering is set to open sometime in the fall of 2023, so stay tuned. And be on the lookout for another happy haunt when you're over there in Liberty Square. You thought we were done talking about new characters in Magic Kingdom? You were wrong. Soon, the legendary Hatbox Ghost, who you may already know from previous Disneyland visits, will materialize over on the East Coast. Back in 2022, at Disney's Big D23 event, Disney shared that the Hatbox Ghost is ready to make a second permanent residency over in the Magic Kingdom. We still don't have a specific debut date quite yet, but we do know that he should be coming to Disney World sometime this year. And we'll keep you updated on when he decides to fully come out and socialize. Now let's talk about coffee and staying caffeinated. So sorry, Main Street Bakery, but we don't always like waiting in a forever long Starbies line just to get our caffeine fix, especially right at the beginning of the day. Now, although I've recommend stopping by Joffrey's Revive in Tomorrowland and Westward Ho in Frontierland before to skip over that excessive wait and still get your cup of joe, there's another underrated coffee stop in Magic Kingdom that deserves a shout out too, and you can find it in Fantasyland. Friar's Nook, right across the way from Seven Dwarfs Mine Train if that's your first stop, not only sells breakfast sandwiches in the morning and loaded tots in the afternoon, but also has freshly brewed Joffrey's coffee too that you can order hot or cold. And best of all, you can mobile order that Friar's Nook coffee through the My Disney Experience app. So sweet, sweet caffeine will be coursing through your veins in no time so you're ready to start your Magic Kingdom day. Now, if you're wanting to ride Tron Light Cycle Run, but you missed the virtual queue drops at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m., you might have one more chance to make up for it depending on what hotel you're staying in. If you're staying at a deluxe resort, then you'll have the opportunity to use extended evening hours, aka the chance to stay in certain parks on certain nights up to two hours after they officially close for everybody else. You can try to grab a boarding group at 6 p.m. on nights when the extended evening hours take place in Magic Kingdom. 
Note that you do not have to physically be in Magic Kingdom to request a virtual queue at 6 p.m., but you do need a valid ticket and park pass reservation, at least here in 2023, for Magic Kingdom on that same day. Or you must have a valid park hopper ticket and have already entered a park with a park pass reservation earlier that day. Either works. Now, some of y'all out there might be rather down in the dumps about Disney World's 50th anniversary being done and over with, but many good things did happen once the celebration finally wrapped up, including the return of the Master's Cupcake. The Master's Cupcake is a chocolate cupcake topped with the gray stuff and crispy pearls, and you can find it at Gaston's Tavern. Now, during the celebration, you could only find a version of the cookies and cream flavored gray stuff dessert if you made reservations for Be Our Guest Restaurant. But now you can pick it up as a cheap and easy snack on the go over at Gaston's Tavern. All right, we got some Tiana's Bayou Adventure news for you. This Secret Magic Kingdom edition isn't in the park yet, but it will be very soon. Currently, the old Splash Mountain Log Flume ride is being remodeled into Tiana's Bayou Adventure, set to open in 2024, but that's not our secret. As it continues being built, we're learning more and more about what's going to be part of this new Princess and the Frog-inspired ride. One of the things we recently found out is that Disney's pulling out the smellitizers once again, but this time they'll be piping the fresh scent of hot, fresh beignets throughout the queue. So hopefully that means we're going to be able to munch on beignets somewhere afterwards, like we're going to be able to do in Disneyland at Tiana's Palace. Fingers crossed. Now this one is really, really cool, and I hope you get the chance to do it. The Walt Disney World Railroad reopened at the end of last year after being closed since 2018 to make way for the new Tron coaster. And during this extended closure, the train got a bit of a makeover, including new narration, a new paint job, and a new route that, very cool enough, just so happens to go under the Tron ride. The tunnel here isn't very long, but it does have a few little openings and windows that peek out at Tron's interior track system, the overhead light light up cover grid and even some pretty flowers underneath. So even if you're not going to ride Tron or you have some little ones who are a little nervous about it or aren't tall enough to ride, you can still take the train and feel like you're right in the middle of all of it. Now this next one is one I didn't even know until uh, just a few months ago, and that's getting the best view of Magic Kingdom at night. Okay, so Magic Kingdom is beautiful during the day, but when the sun goes down and all the lights are on, it's breathtaking. To get the best bird's eye view of the Magic Kingdom in all its illuminated glory, you're gonna wanna hit up one or both of these attractions. The first one is the Swiss Family Treehouse in Adventureland. Climb up to the very top, and you are gonna have an incredible vantage point of the castle and of Tron over there, kind of going blue and orange. It's very, very cool. Also, you can ride the Astro Orbiter in Tomorrowland, you've got that aerial overlook while you spin around and around above the people mover, and you get to see all kinds of things that are going on. It's especially cool, of course, when fireworks are going off. Next, you can order a very, very beloved 50th anniversary treat, even though the celebration has already ended. Now, it might have been sad to see the 50th anniversary wrap up that 18-month-long celebration and have to say goodbye to the fun festive decor and snacks. But not every celebratory snack went away. In fact, one of our favorites is sticking around for a little bit longer. The Tropical Serenade at Aloha Isle in Adventureland was one of the most popular treats to come out of the 50th anniversary, and it's still on the menu for now. This refreshing dessert is made with Disney's famous Pog Juice, that's passion fruit, orange, and guava juice, and coconut soft serve. And then, just to make it all a little sweeter, the treat is topped off with a pineapple upside down cake pop. Next, just because you're not on the Jungle Cruise doesn't mean you've escaped all those corny jokes for good. If you decide to eat at Skipper Canteen, you're going to be able to spot tons of Easter eggs and hidden gems and lots and lots of puns. But the area of the restaurant that holds the most cheesy secrets and what I think is the absolute coolest part of just about any Disney restaurant is the hallway connecting the mess hall and the SEA room. Now, this is a secret bookcase hidden door right now. It's always open here, but just know that it's supposed to be a hidden secret door. And it's basically lined with bookcases because, of course, every good secret passageway is through a bookcase, right? And pretty much every book you're going to see on these rows of shelves is some sort of joke or a nod that relates back to a Disney legend or Imagineer or the Jungle Cruise ride or the Society of Explorers and Adventurers in general. Just to name a few, the author of Tiki Tiki Tiki's of the South Pacific is a nod to Disney legend and score composer Buddy Baker. The author of Meeting Royalty is a tribute to Disney legend 
legend Marty Sklar, and the illustrated guide to radio broadcasting was composed by the skipper behind the voice of the jungle that you hear in the Jungle Cruise queue, Albert Awall. Now, here's a bonus. Don't forget to ask about the secret menu offerings at Skipper Canteen while you're here. In the past, we've been able to order off-menu items like the Brazilian cheese bread, the pau de queijo, and the bang bang shrimp. Who knows what you'll be able to order on your upcoming visit? Be sure to ask. Back to Tron, and we've got a little secret that some of you are going to be able to realize. you got to pay a little extra to see this new secret light up your Magic Kingdom day. But if the stars align and you A, have a Magic Band Plus, and B, you have a virtual queue or individual lightning lane for Tron all lined up, then it's time to brace yourself for that initial launch. Look at your Magic Band Plus during this takeoff, or at least watch it out of the corner of your eye. And when the light cycle launches, your band will light up neon blue to match the ride. So I know this is all about the secrets of Magic Kingdom, but maybe you should spend a little less time in Magic Kingdom on purpose. Confession, you're gonna either love or hate this Magic Kingdom hack. Disney will sometimes close the parks like Magic Kingdom early for cast members or private events, and it can really mess with your plans if you're not prepared for it. But there may be an advantage to Disney closing its parks earlier than normal, and that is, lower wait times. For example, back in January, we went to Magic Kingdom on a day when the park was set to close by 4.30 p.m. for a private event. And although that meant no dinner reservations and no fireworks for us, the ride lines were some of the shortest we'd seen during the day. We saw Big Thunder Mountain Railroad with a 10-minute queue, Haunted Mansion with its lucky number 13, which signifies that the ride's actually a walk-on, and get this, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train dropped down to only a 35-minute wait, which is a big deal for that one. Whether you want to use this strategy or not, it's important to check the Disney World calendar online for park hour updates before you plan your big trip and also right before you go because those park hours can change anytime. Now, want a private photo session in Magic Kingdom? There are ways to make it happen. A capture your moment photo session is an experience you reserve in advance through the Disney World website where you get a Disney photo pass photographer for a private photo shoot. Once you check in and you're escorted to your photo location, you'll have about 20 minutes to take picture after picture after picture. While the Cinderella Castle Capture Your Moment experience has been around for a while now, Disney World recently announced a new location for the Capture Your Magic photo sessions, Fantasyland. That means your photo session could include Cinderella Castle as well as Prince Charming Regal Carousel, Rapunzel's Tower, the tangled toilets, and Prince Eric's Castle as well as Storybook Circus, Belle and Maurice's Cottage, Outside Beast's Castle, and Around the Mad Tea Party. This experience costs 99 bucks and can include up to eight guests. Now, when Happily Ever After returned to the Magic Kingdom on April 3rd, we weren't exactly sure what Disney was going to change about it. As it turns out, the castle projections are pretty much just how we remember them. The real addition for this show now happens all the way down Main Street, USA. Disney Enchantment, the show that played during the 50th anniversary, was the first fireworks show in Magic Kingdom to introduce these all the way down Main Street projections. And now Disney's using that same technology to extend happily ever after, literally. So if you want the best view of the whole performance and not just the castle projections and fireworks, then you're gonna wanna stake out your spot somewhere on Main Street USA about 30 minutes before the show begins. So are you ready to stay up late and party with us? Magic Kingdom holds two holiday after hours events each year, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. During these events, party goers are gonna be able to stay in Magic Kingdom after the park closes to experience exclusive holiday offerings and limited crowds and way shorter ride lines too. Recently, we learned that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party will take place this year from August 11th to November 1st on certain nights, but you can purchase your tickets for the event right now. By the way, if you want to save money on these separate ticketed events, try booking earlier in the season rather than closer to the actual holiday. But the first night of the party is actually priced a little bit higher, so don't try to go for the first night, go for the second. Now, want a secret tip to get priority viewing for a popular show? If you want to guarantee a good view of the Festival of Fantasy Parade, which of course you do, just turn toward Genie Plus for a little extra help. Genie Plus is best known for its premium lightning lanes that'll help you skip over the huge ride lines in Disney World, but that's not all it can do. You can also use your lightning lane privileges to book priority viewing for the Festival of Fantasy Parade too. After you book a Festival of Fantasy lightning lane, you'll be given a return window for one of the parade showings. When the time comes, report to the Castle Hub directly in front of the partner statue and you'll find a roped off area for exclusive parade viewing. 
This next one I absolutely love and adore. It's completely free and it's great for the kids. You can write a letter to Santa anytime you want in Magic Kingdom. Whether you're visiting Magic Kingdom during the most wonderful time of the year or you're visiting on a random weekday in like July, you can always drop a line to Jolly Old St. Nicholas over at the Yield Christmas Shop in Liberty Square. Using the blank templates and crayons the location provides, you or your kids can draft wish lists for Santa. Once you're done writing your letter, drop it into Santa's mailbox and voila, you're officially ready for the holidays, even if it is still months and months away. Now, this next tip is a great way to save a ton of time. The My Disney Experience app is your best free planning tool that'll help you skip over major lines that you just don't feel like standing around in all day long. We know this. And that goes for Magic Kingdom's main gift shop, the Emporium 2. That's right, you can skip out on waiting in those long, long lines to check out with your t-shirt or your sweatshirt or your Mickey shaped soap or whatever you're getting, you don't have to stand in line for it at the Emporium anymore, y'all. To use my Disney Experience's mobile checkout option and avoid those physical shop queues altogether, make sure you're signed into your My Disney Experience account on your phone. Open up the app and tap the plus symbol at the bottom of your screen, and you should see an option there to shop in store. Tap on that, and then you'll select the Emporium. You'll use your phone to scan the barcodes of anything you want to buy in the shop, and once you're finished shopping, hit checkout. You can pay for your souvenirs on the app as well. Once you've paid, you'll be given a QR code, which you'll need to show to a cast member at the door of the shop. They'll scan the code and verify that you've paid for your purchases, and then you're good to go. No lines anywhere. So the Walt Disney World Railroad travels a circle around Magic Kingdom with stops at stations on Main Street USA, Frontierland, and Fantasyland. You can get off and on at any of the stations, but if you have a chance to choose your seats freely, we have a recommendation. The DFB team has found that while sitting near the front of the train may seem like a fun time, it's probably not going to be the best if you want to hear the in-ride audio. In the first two train cars, it can be difficult to hear the conductor's voiceover over the sound of the engine chugging and the whistle blowing. So where do we recommend instead? Our favorite place to sit is actually in the middle of the train so you can get a nice view as you pull into each station. Now, if you're planning on popping the question to your honey bunny inside the most magical place on Earth, within the most iconic Disney weenie, aka Cinderella Castle, the Cinderella's Royal Table crew would love to join in on the fun. By the way, weenies are what Walt called the kind of central icons of every one of the parks. So I didn't just make that up. That's like a real like Disney thing. Now, proposal packages are available to purchase at Cinderella's Royal Table. You'll even be provided with your own fairy godmother to help assist you. And magical proposal packages provide an all-inclusive dinner at Cinderella's Royal Table featuring an exclusive chocolate slipper dessert, an engraved glass slipper, which will hold the bling, champagne flutes for toasting, and the promise of the most memorable night ever. To order this package, you'll need to call 407-824-4477 or email, ready? Got a pen? Okay. <laughs> WTT www.crt.special.events at disney.com for pricing details and proposal arrangements. This is really popular. I know a lot of you have done it. A lot of people are really hoping this is how they're going to get proposed to. So it's a good one to know about. Now, maybe after this proposal, <laughs> when you go to Liberty Square, don't look for a restroom there. Magic Kingdom tries to provide restrooms in every land except for this one. So why is this area of the park being left out of the Porcelain Throne Club? Because public restrooms weren't a thing in colonial times. That's also why you're going to see a lovely brown pathway paved throughout this land representing the waste that used to flow through the streets during these times. I know, I know, some of you don't believe that's actually true and it's not a valid like little secret but anyway a lot of people do think it's true so it's good for you to know just so you know what people are talking about when they talk about the poop river anyway the closest public restrooms you're going to find while you're inside liberty square are located in Fantasyland and Frontierland. although you can also find restrooms inside liberty square's restaurants the columbia harbor house and liberty tree tavern too but Disney likes to say those are technically in fantasy land because they're like set back. So it's very, very interesting. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. <laughs> 
Okay, when you are in Magic Kingdom, do not forget to look down. Since we're already warning you about the sewage trail throughout Liberty Square, now would be a good time to talk about all the different types of Imagineering that goes on in Magic Kingdom right under your feet. Now, I'm not talking about the Utilidors. That's in a different video. But several hidden gems of Magic Kingdom can be found without you having to board a ride or make reservations at a restaurant. Just look down at the pavement. You're going to find tiles and gems in part of the pavement near the magic carpets of Aladdin. You'll find a ghostly bride's ring embedded in the pavement at the Haunted Mansion queue. You'll find scattered peanut shells on the floor of Storybook Circus, and you'll even find Maximus's hoof prints near the tangled restrooms too. There's just lots of cool stuff embedded in the ground around Disney World, especially in Magic Kingdom, so take a look next time you're there. Now this next one's very, very cool, and part of it is just updated too, so that's awesome. Okay, if you are an American history buff, you're gonna love this. As you walk into the Hall of Presidents in Magic Kingdom, you're gonna see a roped off seal on the floor. Now this seal is actually the Great Seal of the United States, tucked into Disney World. It's made of 100% wool carpet, and what's really special about it is that it actually took multiple acts of Congress to grant Disney the permission to display this. But there's more in there now too. Before you go into the theater, search out the cabinet with the saddle in it. There you're going to find a folded up American flag. This flag actually played a special role in the opening of Disney World in 1971. On October 1st, former President Richard Nixon flew an American flag outside of the White House. He then packaged that very flag and sent it to Roy Disney, who used it on Disney World's dedication day on October 25th, 1971. And that's the real flag. They just got it from the archives and now it's in Magic Kingdom. So who's ready for a tragic tale about a plane that'll never reunite with the rest of itself? The next time you ride on Jungle Cruise, take a closer look at the half airplane used in the attraction. The other the other half of this plane used to be found in the Casablanca scene in The Great Movie Ride over in Disney's Hollywood Studios. But now that The Great Movie Ride has been replaced by Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the other half of this plane has taken off elsewhere. Maybe somebody will find it someday with the remains of the Rainbow Tunnel. We'll see. Now it's time to track down a hidden Tinkerbell. I haven't talked about this on the channel in a really long time, probably a couple of years now that I think about it. So you know how you look for hidden Mickeys all the time, right? This is a hidden Tinkerbell and she's just as much fun to find. As you exit Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, look toward your left to track down a familiar fairy silhouette in the rock work. It may take a minute to see her, but once you do, you can't unsee her. Next, despite all the hustle and bustle going on down Main Street, USA, if you take a moment to just listen to what's going on around you, you'll wind up hearing some underrated Imagineering touches coming from up above. Halfway down Main Street, USA, on the right, there's a side street named Center Street. If you head back in this area and you try to stay real quiet, then you'll be able to hear the sounds of the citizens of Main Street conducting music and dance lessons in the rooms above. Speaking of music lessons, it seems a rather iconic Disney character is looking to expand his voice lesson clientele. Located across from Sleepy Hollow Refreshments over there in Liberty Square, you're going to find an ad for voice lessons by the Ichabod Crane, who stars in the Legend of Sleepy Hollow animated short film. Poor Icky doesn't get a whole lot of recognition in the parks, but this little corner of Liberty Square definitely pays him tribute. This next one is one of my very favorite things that happens in Magic Kingdom. It is amazing, especially if you get the chance to see it. It is the once a year hidden Mickey. Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid is that dark ride with some of the biggest hidden secrets you're going to find in all the park. For starters, there's a hidden steamboat willy in the rocks that you can spot as you exit the ride. There's also a Nautilus hiding in the rocks in the standby queue, paying tribute to the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea submarine voyage that used to occupy this same space before Ariel and her friends did. But one of our all-time favorite hidden Mickeys in the whole world exists in this Under the Sea queue too. If you head to this ride's queue at noon on November 18th each year, aka Mickey and Minnie's birthday, you'll be treated to one of the rarest hidden Mickeys of all time. Each year, the rock formations around the queue line up perfectly with the position of the sun to project a hidden Mickey shadow on the wall. Lots of people go to see it. They actually sing a round of happy birthday for Mickey. And unfortunately, if it's a cloudy day, you're not going to see it because it literally only comes up that one day. So we actually had to go a couple years in a row to finally see it because it was cloudy. 
Now, Pinocchio Village House isn't just a quick service for flatbreads. It's a quick service for wishes, too. If you decide to dine here, make sure to track down the wish book on the first floor. This book is located in the back left side of the restaurant and is left there so that you and any other guests can write down your biggest, brightest wishes for the Blue Fairy. Now, who knows? Maybe she herself will drop in and take these wishes under consideration for granting. Anything is possible. Extra little tip on this one. If you sit in a certain area, area of Pinocchio Village House, you're going to be able to watch everybody sailing on the happiest cruise that ever sailed over on It's a Small World. Now, did you know you could see it snow in Florida? Well, Be Our Guest Restaurant is a fan favorite for a reason. The food might not be our personal favorite, but you can't help but love that theming. And while you're busy admiring all the details that go into creating the three dining rooms, each inspired by the animated Beauty and the Beast film, you'll want to take an even closer look at what details you might find in the main ballroom area. For example, take a look at those long windows, and that is snow you're looking at, but not just any snow. This snow is made up of animation cells straight from the Beauty and the Beast film. So what you're looking at is actually what you'll see in the Beauty and the Beast animated film. It's very, very cool. Now look up at the ceiling next. On the ceiling in the grand ballroom, you'll see paintings of cherubs. And come to find out, these little cherub babies are actually the faces of Disney Imagineer babies. Cute? Yes. Slightly unsettling? Also yes. But I approve regardless. And this next one is perfect for any of you baseball fans out there or brownie fans. That's me. Time to root for the home team over on Main Street USA. Every morning at Casey's Corner, a first pitch is thrown out before the quick service opens up for the day. Usually cast members at Casey's Corner, which is right there on Main Street, by the way, the hot dog place, will ask kiddos if they'd like to throw the first pitch. And if they do, these kids will get a free brownie afterwards for a pitch well done. It's important to note that only one or two kids get to participate in this opening ceremony each day and it's all pretty much up to chance and on occasion one lucky adult might be picked to throw out the first pitch again all up to chance here but that baseball brownie they give you is one of my favorite brownies in Disney World believe it or not so even if you don't get one for free you should buy one anyway now you might think the Liberty Tree is just a tree over there in Liberty Square, but it's one of the most impressive trees on property for a lot of reasons. Over 30 years ago, a 130-year-old live oak tree was found on the Disney World property and moved to Magic Kingdom. Because of its size and weight, holes actually had to be drilled through the middle of the trunk so that steel pins could be inserted into it to make sure it could be lifted by a crane. Later, the pins were removed and replaced with hardwood, and the tree's boo-boos were healed. But super healing powers isn't the only reason we gotta admire this large and leafy foliage. The Liberty Tree is also said to have fathered over 500 other trees from its acorns. Now, that's a lot of tree kids to keep up with. But I do wanna see a show of hands. How many of you knew there was a Liberty Tree right next to Liberty Tree Tavern? Okay, good. Next thing you can do in Magic Kingdom, go on a pirate quest. And this one's the best because it's free. A Pirate's Adventure Legend of the Seven Seas is an interactive Pirates of the Caribbean themed treasure hunt that takes place throughout Adventureland. It's an immersive adventure. It's completely free. It's a great way to explore this whole land from a whole new perspective. It's also a great way to pass the time when all the ride lines are super long. There are five missions total, and each mission takes about 20 minutes to complete. And if you do happen to accomplish all five missions, you'll receive a special completer gift signed by Captain Jack Sparrow himself. You can stop by the Crow's Nest near the Pirates of the Caribbean ride to pick up your first map and get started on your journey. Now, of course, in Magic Kingdom, you're gonna be able to get pixie dusted, right? You might be familiar with the popular Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique experience where you can receive a whole royal makeover inspired by your favorite hero or heroine, thanks to a very special fairy godmother in training. And while that experience is a ton of fun for little ones, it can also be real, real expensive and hard to book for the parents. However, there's a secret little free magical makeover experience you can find tucked away in Fantasyland that might help make up for missing Bibbidi Bobbidi. You can ask a cast member to be pixie dusted in Sir Mickey's gift shop. Just scout out the cast member in the shop that's holding a magic wand. They'll say the magic words and sprinkle you with a magical pixie dust that you'll not only get to wear all day long, but probably the rest of your life 
life too, since glitter is basically impossible to get out of hair, let me tell you. Even if you don't see a cast member carrying around a magic wand, you can always ask about it up at the counter. After all, pixie dust is never too far away when you're in fantasy land. Now, are you ready to solve a mystery? In the Haunted Mansion queue, there's a little mystery that needs solving, so listen up all you true crime fans out there. The mystery is played out among the collection of busts near the front of the queue line, and to play along, just read the rhyming plaques underneath each bust and find out what exactly happened to this family of victims. I won't give anything away, but what I will say is that you need to pay careful attention to not just the plaques, but the busts themselves. You may just discover some incriminating clues that can help you put the pieces of this twisted tale together. By the way, for those who were intrigued by the ring that's embedded in the pavement here, it's right across from these busts, really. It's over by a garbage can, right where the two lines split. Okay, you ready to take a peek at the OG Epcot? Epcot in Magic Kingdom? Is this park inception? Eh, sort of. While riding the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, which is the best ride in Magic Kingdom and I will be taking no further questions, you'll ride through a tunnel and catch a glimpse at the model for the original Epcot, which was originally going to be called Progress City. This original model was intended to be a living community, which is, of course, what Epcot was supposed to be, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. But it is very different from the Epcot we know and love today. But the model you'll find inside People Mover is the real deal, action model restored over the years and moved to Disney World for guests to ooh and ah over. It's basically the most important historical element in all of Magic Kingdom in Magic Kingdom's most wonderful ride ever. So it's kind of like sacred. Now some Magic Kingdom secrets transform before your very eyes depending on the angle you're looking at them. Take the Cinderella Fountain in Fantasyland for instance, which is located near the back of the castle. When you look at the Cinderella statue in the middle of this fountain, now this isn't the wishing well, this is the fountain, so when you're going through the castle, it's going to be over to your left, not your right. So when you look at the Cinderella statue in the middle of this fountain from the height of an adult, she's just our girl Cindy that we know and love. But when you look at this statue from the height of a child, the royal backdrop behind her will make it look like she has a crown on her head. Bonus tip, if you throw any wishing coins in this fountain or any of the other Disney World fountains around the parks, all those coins are regularly collected and donated to children's charities in Central Florida. So your well wishes can help make someone else's dreams come true. Now, sometimes Sometimes character sightings happen in the places we least expect them to. It's called surprise and delight. Over in Liberty Square, there's a chance you might get to see Princess Tiana greeting guests, but you're going to have to look up to find her. Occasionally, Tiana will be looking out one of the windows in Liberty Square, waving hello to her friends down below. The last time we saw her here was more towards the evening around 5 p.m., but she doesn't have a set schedule for this pop-up location like many of the other characters do, which you can find on the My Disney Experience app. So you'll just have to cross your fingers and wish upon a star in the hopes that she'll be around Liberty Square during your upcoming visit. But maybe don't go around kissing frogs. I don't know that that works in Magic Kingdom. You can also occasionally meet Princess Tiana at the Princess Fairy Tale Hall in Fantasyland, but this meet and greet does get rather popular by the afternoon, so a quick hi and bye past the Liberty Square window is a nice alternative to the super long wait times or wasting a lightning lane, if she just so happens to be there, that is. Now, we just discovered this one and I love it. This is how you get the best pictures of the Magic Kingdom Parade. If you're hoping to get as much Festival of Fantasy Parade time as possible in Magic Kingdom, this is the hack for you. While the parade normally only runs two times daily, there's actually a super sneaky way for you to see it twice during each showing. Festival of Fantasy runs a route from Frontierland next to Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe to the end of Main Street USA, ending by the fire station. So to begin this parade viewing hack, you'll want to stake out a viewing location in either Frontierland or Liberty Square, preferably on the Country Bear Jamboree Liberty Tree Tavern or Yield Christmas Shop side of the parade route. Since the parade starts in Frontierland, you'll be among the first to watch it. The performance moves pretty slowly down the route, so our tip relies on you being able to outwalk the parade to the front of the park. Once you've watched it in Frontierland of Liberty Square, use the parade map, which you can find on your My Disney Experience app, to help guide you to where you'll be able to watch it again. But how do you get there? Well, our two favorite shortcuts to take through the park are the pathway behind Ye Olde Christmas Shop that cuts over to Crystal Palace, you know, over there by Adventureland, or the walkway from Frontierland to Adventureland. That's a little cut through that comes out right there by Aloha Isle. 
Now, once you make it to Casey's Corner, you can head inside to cut through the Emporium gift shop. Walking all the way through the shop will lead you to the end of the parade route, and that's where you're gonna get another view of the floats heading backstage by the fire station. Now, some call this a ride, some call this a show, but we simply refer to it as iconic. In all seriousness though, Carousel of Progress really is a show. In fact, it's actually the longest running stage show in American theater history. So how's that for a little bit of trivia? Carousel of Progress has been running since it opened at the 1964 World's Fair in New York. Afterwards, it moved to Disneyland in 1967, and then it moved on to Disney World in 1975, where it's remained showing every day to this very day. Now, speaking of Carousel of Progress, the next one on our list is a few Easter eggs in here that you gotta see. For example, the final scene has several hidden Mickeys, including the salt and pepper shakers, the presents around the Christmas tree, and a very mousy looking nutcracker. And does the grandmother in this family seem a little familiar to you? If so, that's because Carousel of Progress and the Haunted Mansion use the same grandmother animatronic model for both their attractions. You can find her again in the ballroom scene inside the Haunted Mansion as one of the 999 Happy Haunts. Now, did you know you can visit an attraction that's originally from Detroit? You might think that Prince Charming Regal Carousel should have originated from some magical or fantastical land, but it actually comes from a place that's a little more recognizable. America's Motor City, AKA Detroit, Michigan. Which by the way, for those of you who don't know, my dad was from Holly, Michigan, which is over near Flint. And so if you are also from the Mitten State, please let me know. The carousel was originally built by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, which is one of the oldest existing roller coaster manufacturing companies in the world. The carousel was initially called the Liberty Carousel and was used in Michigan and New Jersey before Disney purchased it in 1967. Bonus fact, try to track down the carousel horse with the golden ribbon wrapped around its tail. If you find it, then you found Cinderella's personal horse. Go ahead and take it for a ride. I'm sure Cindy won't mind. Now, right behind the carousel, did you know you could be one of the lucky ones to pull the sword from the stone? Now, this is a pretty overlooked experience in Magic Kingdom as of late, and maybe that's for a good reason. Behind that carousel, and as you're facing the castle, you'll find the one, the only sword in the stone, inspired by the legends of Camelot and King Arthur. You too can grasp the hilt of Excalibur and see if you can pry it from the stone and be crowned king or queen of all of England, as the legend goes. But not everyone gets to be so lucky. Not everyone who attempts this feat will prove successful. But I'm curious, will you wind up being the chosen one? Can you feel your brain getting wrinkly with all that Magic Kingdom knowledge? You should, because that's a lot of good Disney World info you just absorbed right there. If you're now inspired to start planning your Magic Kingdom day, but you want to make sure you don't miss out on something important, don't forget to send us your name and email at disneyfoodblog.com slash magic kingdom checklist for that full PDF, which is going to help you keep track of all the things you want to do and all the things you've done around the park. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. This has been such a fun one to do for you. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.